In this episode, we practice welding butt joints. Well, Mr. 86 fan, I'm Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod in your confidence without a ton of money. And of course, we continue on this new series I call What We Weld In Weekly, um, which is just a simple attempt to document over the course of a year, if you only have a couple hours a week, how much you can grow welding. And that's where we left off in the last episode. We, uh, we started prepping some, some metal tabs, some 3 16 inch steel. Um, for these different exercises, and I was able to clear, clean up um, three of those pieces, um, or three sets, I might say, to get us basically ready to rock and roll tonight. However, so here are all the uh, the rusty ones, and I put in a plastic bag the ones I cleaned, which. Yeah, okay, good. Um, you know, try to keep the moisture out of them for over the course of a week. It looks like they held up pretty well. I need to dress them one more time with the flap disc, but let me bring you in closer and show you what else I need to do to these. All right, so as mentioned earlier, I need to dress these up one more time. Um, I've got a little bit of like grease spots from the clamp that I was clamping, uh, you know, the piece down to my, my, my table here with. Um, but I went ahead and I beveled one edge on all of these, which is great, great starting point. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel the ends on some of these. So what I'm going to do, I will bevel one set on one side, no, two sets, <laughs> two sets on one side, and then one set on two sides. So when I get these all done, um, and welded together, then I can come back through and we can start stacking them together. Um, like so. And have more uh, more practice. So anyway, let me get to uh, let me get to finishing these up and then we'll we'll get to welding because another reason why I wanted to do it this way, I suppose I could I guess I guess this would be a longer um, longer opportunity to do something like that. Maybe I'll do that. Um, there are a couple different techniques I want to practice tonight. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. Uh, I don't know which is more obnoxious. I guess it kind of ends up being the same. Not quite the same dimension, but anyway, you'll see that. We have our three sets cleaned. Uh, now, kind of final prep. I will take some acetone and wipe these all down with that as a last layer of cleaning. Now, keep in mind with arc welding or SMAW shielded metal arc welding, um, it's a little. Bit, it's the most forgiving of the three processes um, in terms of how clean your metal has to be. But again, this is just if you remember from my first episode. What I'm doing is I'm trying to take. I took. Steve Darnell's Welder 101 class, or I'm not all the way through it, but it's it's designed for teaching how to MIG weld. And since I don't have a MIG welder, I'm trying to apply as many techniques as I can, see how they carry over to arc welding, because I still think, um, much like my 5-Minute Friday from a while ago, which I'll leave up over here, I, I have this belief that it doesn't really matter which form of welding you start in, just start in one, and you can learn a lot and carry it over to other processes. So. Anyway, clean metal prep is something that I just need to get in a better habit of, as it is. So that's what, again, that, this is my, my, I keep joking with my wife that I'm going back to school to get my associate's degree when I already have a bachelor's degree, but this is my training. This is my school, my class. This is two hours a week, every week, for 52 weeks, and let's just see where we get. Um, so anyway, I hit these with, with acetone, and um, there's a couple different techniques I want to try. Okay, first off, some of these bevels are deeper than others, so not all bevels are created equal. 
Um, and I will use my thicker rod for that. I want to try one set at least with, uh, I've got a uh, 116, no. Well, I've got a thinner rod. I'll, we'll, we'll cover that later when I have it in my hand. Um, so I want to try some with that. Uh, but then, you know, with stick welding, arc welding, uh, you have the advantage of we can just drag the rod straight through this, um, through these, or I will do what's more natural to me, uh, just from my time being spent. I do a little more of a swirl, so just really concentrating on blending the three metals: this metal, this metal, and then my my rod metal itself. So kind of coming coming down, make sure we're penetrating over here, getting back into the weld, make sure we're penetrating there, and then just kind of doing a circular motion. So. Again, that's why we beveled the other edges of these, um, because then there's a, another technique that there's this uh, Asian, I, or I believe, an Asian channel, and I, I'll leave an info card to his channel, but he he will just get in there, kind of just tack, like just kind of get the rod, go, pull, go, pull, go, pull, and he produces some really nice looking welds, the way they, they stack, you know, like, like everybody always talks about stacking dimes, but... Anyway, so we're going to try a bunch of those and just, just, that's what this is about. Alright, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm pulling technique over from Steve Darnell's Welder 101 courses. Now, I highly recommend that if you do want to pick up MIG welding, definitely, it's worth, it's worth its money. Um, I've learned a lot, like I said, that I can carry over here. Um, but I will leave an info card to one of his, uh, one of the episodes, which is free here on YouTube, uh, so you can kind of get a taste for that class. But um, one of the things Steve recommends is to, to put a gap, and this is something else I've never really done. I, I typically just, I butt materials together historically. Um, so let's get a clamp started here. And then find you something uh, that works for you. And I can put a little bit of a gap in there. Get this clamp going. Need a third hand. Spread my clamps out a little more so it's easier for me to get that rod in. Now that's a pretty aggressive gap. This might be a little much, but we're gonna give it a shot just to see what, what we end up with. The perfectionist in me, which I'm not really. Historically, I'm not really a perfectionist, but I can spend the extra time to line these sample pieces up. We're gonna reclaim it here. I'm sure some of you by now are sick of me talking um, and just wanna see some welding action. Uh, so uh, we're getting there, but one last thing I'll say is I consider myself, whatever the first step is, above uh, a beginner. And um, so whatever that is, you, you make up your own mind. But um, if you're if you are a true beginner, um, don't be afraid to just get a piece of flat stock and run your run your rod. Just a, just learning to run a bead on just a piece of metal. Don't try to fuse two things together because that is still a skill that you can uh, that, that you need to have. It's an obvious skill you need to have. But like, don't put that undue stress on you by needing to have to feel like you have to fuse two pieces of metal together. Uh, learning to hold an arc and run a straight bead is a skill in of itself. So that's what I recommend where you start. That's what I did when I started. It helps a ton. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get going.
and we've got ourselves our practice piece tacked together on the ends. And so what we're going to do before we get going, we're gonna start our, our bead beyond our tack weld, come up to it, and then pull back down. So that's the process we're gonna do. Um, this first go around, I think I'm gonna try the, the swirl pattern, because uh, that's my method that I prefer. Um, so we'll see what happens there. As I mentioned, like I said, we will start our bead, say, right up in here. We'll come up to the tack weld and then pull back down. One thing I wanted to mention is, again, another thing as a beginner, don't be afraid to... I, I, I like to kind of think about arc welding almost like shooting pool. Um, sometimes you got to do different things with your... Uh, whatever the, the lead hand is, you know, with the pool stick. I, don't be afraid to use two hands when you're starting to weld. Um, I like to kind of put an elbow on a table like this and, and take my non-dominant hand, my left hand, um, and kind of just, it helps me control rod angle and what I want to do and steadiness. So as you get better, you can start switching over to the control of one hand, but I like using two hands. I feel like it just, I can control things a little bit better. So I stopped halfway there because I could see a lot of porosity in my uh, in my bead, and while I, the, the heat didn't seem bad, and I don't see any signs of overcut, I don't know. It just seems like I can fine tune this a little bit before I. Seemed like I had to go a little too fast. I don't know. I mean, I'm not upset about this, but like I said, it just seemed like I had to go just a. A little too fast, but hey, wh where that came off, that was that was nice. Yeah, a little bit of undercut. Um, again, this is the tricky part. I tried to start here, come up to my tack weld. I didn't do a good enough job there. You can see. Uh, anyway, so that's a skill I need to get better at. I'm gonna back the heat off just a little bit because yeah, we've got just a little bit of undercut. Well, shoot, I thought I had hit record, but I didn't. Um, so what I was explaining was how it was another opportunity for me to start my bead ahead of where we left off, move up to it, and then come back down. So um, we'll, we'll knock the slag off and I'll, I'll get closer to the camera and we'll see how I did there. I think I got the heat just about right. Um, it's a nice flat weld, really. I mean, that bevel wound up not being too aggressive, really. Um, you can kind of flip it around the backside and we can see just how far we penetrated. I mean, we still have, still have definitely a little bit to go, but um, you know, they say, if you really want to tell how well he did, you'd cut it in half and see how solid the metal is between uh, I don't think I'm there yet <laughs> just kind of seeing what I'm seeing but uh, you know I think feel like 70 amps is just about the right amount of heat um, but uh, yeah we're gonna you know I'm not it's not an 8 plus weld but uh, solid B student I think I wouldn't want to be I'm not ashamed of this but there's definitely some things I need to work on Again, being able to connect the beads, you know, when you're tr changing out a stick or whatever, or electrode, I suppose, and then I didn't do a very good um, come up to my tack weld start here. So, anyway, this next round, we're just going to try the drag technique and see if we can get, um, you know, similar to better results in this.
perfect timing. All right, so you may have noticed about halfway through, I, uh, I changed my technique a little bit. Let's see how hot this is. Where I, w I started and I was just, just dragging. But then, you know, kind of just seeing through my welding helmet, it just seemed like a, a really narrow puddle because it was going right in the bevel. So about halfway through, I started to do, uh, as I'm dragging, just push back up a little bit and do that kind of motion. So we'll see if that gained me any um, additional advantages. Uh, we'll see. It's like a scratch off ticket. Oh, well, there we go. That was nice. All right, here we are on the drag technique. So again, this was just the simple drag. And you can see I've got some pinholes here and here. Um, but halfway through, when I started to do the kind of pulse of motion, this right here is probably the nicest uh, portion of the whole of the whole weld. You can also see how uh, more and more heat was introduced to the metal. By the time we got to the end and stood up on it, you can kind of just see um, you can see that ring, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm thinking that uh, what I'm learning here, and this is nice and flat, and yeah, it looks like we got a little further down uh, for as far as penetration goes on the backside here uh, than the first one. You know, maybe it's just a, maybe it's a byproduct of this wasn't my first one, it was my second, but it seems like the drag and pulse uh, it seems like you can quote me out of context there, like make a pun. Uh, but uh, the drag and pulse motion, I feel like it's the, the nicest move here. So we're gonna do one more um, setup here. And uh, we're gonna try the 1 16th inch rod. Uh, so we're gonna make that bevel well, we'll probably just butt them up straight up to each other and uh, just run this in the, the bevel. So kind of interested to see how this is going to work out. But all of my episodes, I'm going to be running 7014. Again, this is just a byproduct of when I bought my first machine, it came with 7014 and I've never, never switched. All right, real quick. Tack welding with that thinner rod, I still had it at 70 and boy, it was just going to go that electrode is going to go fast, so we're going to back this down, and that makes more that makes sense so if you're trying to push the same amount of amperage through the smaller diameter rod. That 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 would happen. So we're going to back off the amperage. Um, I don't know. We'll try maybe 63. See what that looks like, and try to run it. All right, back. That one's running pretty fast. So I might back it off even a little more here. Yeah, not a bad little weld, but we got a little bit of BBs and stuff. So again, I, as fast as I was having to move that rod, I can for sure stand a little less heat. So we'll go ahead and keep on moving down. 55 amps this time. Alright, you see that? Now we're too low. The way that was sputtering. Throw it back up to 60.
again, I was, I was burning through that rod fast. This is definitely more uh, C material here, guys. So there we are. Definite struggle. You can see, not near as pretty as my other other ones. I mean, we did all right here. This is, uh, you know, when we started at 63 amps, I think it was. Maybe it was just about right. It was just, I mean, I mean, I just had to run so fast that when I got into the middle, my rod angle, you may have noticed, I don't know how well it showed up on camera, but my rod angle got uh, out of position and, and that's part of what I was fighting in there. But uh, yeah, shoot. Well, glad I start beveling other sides. So we'll, um, let's try the, uh, let's try the, well, I don't even know what you call the other technique. This is the last one I'm gonna do. Well, second to last one I'm gonna do, but the last one I'm gonna do, uh, the last one will be a freestyle. Like, I will just repeat something you've already seen before, but this one comes to us from a channel. It's, I don't know if it's an acronym or what, uh, but I looked it up. It's Rapu Cuff, um, but he's got this process where you just like, it's like, after it's tacked, it's like in, lift, in, lift in lift and he produces some really nice looking welds with that um, so I'm gonna leave a link to that video that I'm specifically talking about and this is the first time I've ever tried it I doubt I'm gonna do it well <laughs> but we're gonna give it a shot started to pull back. I can tell you right now that is just extremely difficult. Um, the tricky part is, is like get it started, get a good bead, but then get it out so you're not long arcing it. Um, wow, that is tough. He sure makes it look easy on his video. Definitely something I'm going to need a ton more practice on if I want to. Sure, that's in my my tool of trick or my my bag of tricks. All right, well, we'll go back to the uh, the dragon push. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try one more thing. I don't, I'm wondering if I just didn't quite have a good ground. So we're gonna go to the piece itself and we're gonna, we're gonna give the grapple cuff uh, technique one more shot.
Nope. Yep, nope. Dragon push much, much better um, for someone of my skill set. Um, so this is going to be. I think this is where we're going to finish the night up with, uh, with one last, one last butt joint. This was right at 75 amps, which I, I think was, you know, we said earlier was maybe a little too hot. So I think what I'm going to do, we're going to dial it back to since we can on the Everlast something like 72 or 73 and see if that's just like the super sweet spot and uh, just see what what that gets us Love it when the slag pops off that easy. I had to start and stop more than I wanted to, but I could feel my rod was just getting out of position. And it, you can just tell I was getting a bad rod angle, but really, aside from having to start and stop, that probably is the best weld of the night. So, what a one to what one to finish on. Like I said, you can see we're at a lift and come back in. Didn't do as good over here as I did here. That's not perfect either, but uh, it's a nice flat weld, and I like it quite a bit. So. Anyway, well, I think for the sake of tonight, like that's all I'm gonna film aside from. If you wanna get caught up on the rest of the series, if we have enough episodes now, I'll leave them one and two up over here for you guys to go check those out. Um, time to start cleaning up some more of these tabs so we can prep for next week's show. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. I don't care which one you do. As long as you do one, that really helps the channel out. That's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, peace out.